What's up guys, Trevor Hunter here with Dirt Bike Test. Today we uh, we just spent a weekend riding in the mountains here with these 2023 450 off-road models. We have the KX450X and the Honda Sierra 450RX. So these are more of the competition-based off-road models, but we had these out in the trails and out in the mountains where they're not necessarily maybe designed for this kind of riding, but we thought we'd try them out and see kind of how they compare and if they try transfer over to the more like off-road enduro kind of side rather than the off-road racing um, application and uh, yeah we were honestly we we're pretty blown away with how well both of these bikes work um, quite different in a lot of ways but also kind of similar in some ways so we'll start with the kx the kx is very stable very planted very long feeling um, has good good overall broad power um, the kawasaki does have a few more mods than the honda does got suspension work it's got um, a linkage or a uh, link arm got a gas tank um, yeah some suspension revalve and respring some a steering stabilizer just some basic stuff um, where the Honda is very soft has a different front tire uh, different handlebars and a, an exhaust system with a spark ruster Yeah, the pro circuit system on the Kawasaki and a Yoshimura system on the Honda so like I said the Kawasaki very long feeling, very stable, uh, planted. Just overall does everything really well. Um, it's hard to find a fault in this bike. I think as the speeds got slower and slower and the terrain a little more more technical, the KX didn't shine quite as much, but in second, third gear, flowing single track or fire roads or kind of anything rough and rocky and rooty, um, the bike just handled everything really, really well. So pretty, fairly nimble for its weight and size. Um, but more, it's more of a longer, stable feeling bike, and uh, it's one that everyone jumped on and could get get along with really well right out of the box. Um, <clears throat> this bike, we've been pretty happy with this bike and all the conditions we've ridden up to this point. And now that we've ridden it in the mountains, we're pretty happy with it as well. And uh, yeah, the motor, pretty tractable, long, smooth power. Um, we had an ECU reflash by Precision Concepts, so that kind of helps smooth the power out a little bit, make it more rider friendly. Uh, especially off the bottom and initial crack of the throttle, um, not quite as jerky, a little smoother, easier to manage and ride, especially in the tighter single track and stuff like that. So moving on to the Honda, the, when you get up on the Honda, it's very, uh, we'd say it's a little more picky and finicky to its setup than the Kawasaki might be, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just, it takes a little more work or time to find that, that perfect setting. But I think once you find that setting, the spike works really, really well, especially in the terrain, uh, train we're riding in this weekend i'm um, getting a single track instantly jumping from bike to bike this honda feels 10 15 pounds lighter than the kawasaki uh, it's quite drastic how light this bike feels and how nimble and agile this honda is um, we've always said it's a very good cornering bike maybe one of the best cornering bikes out there on the motocross track and on the grand prix and stuff like that and we translate that to the forest and the trees um, it carries all that over and more so the bike is super nimble, super agile, lightweight feeling. We'd say it's probably one of the, if not the lightest feeling bikes uh, in the single track and trees like that. Just super responsive to weighting the foot pegs and moving around trees. And it's overall really light feeling and agile feeling. And where we kind of was tougher to ride this bike is when you're kind of riding like roots and kind of hitting rocks and edges at kind of more higher speeds, um, kind of third, fourth gear, stuff like that. The bike didn't quite handle that quite as good as the Kawasaki, which is a little more stable and planted. Um, but I think some suspension work would help that the Honda out a lot, tremendously. I think overall the ch chassis itself lends itself to being more agile and nimble, whereas the Kawasaki is more of a stable machine. But yeah, this, the Honda overall handled really well. The motor, the motor's actually, we've gotten it pretty good. Uh, most of our riders tend to spend their time in map one, Map one, two, or three, just depending on the rider. Um, personally, I'm a map three guy. I can the th third map, ride taller gears, kind of lug the bike around. It should be smooth and easy on the throttle. Uh, you get get away from you for sure if you're kind of aggressive and ride it too hard. But overall, I, the, myself, I like the map three. A lot of our riders do like the map one though, just super broad. Overall, just really good power. Um, good bottom end, mid range, top end, just everything is really well uh, put together on that map one. So that's probably the more popular map, uh, especially in this kind of terrain, but I do like the map three as well. Um, it's a good addition to have and something that's, it's cool. It's, it's hard to change on the fly on the Honda, but it's a lot easier than the couplers and stuff like that, where you got to bring separate couplers and pull over and turn the bike off. The Honda, you can kind of, if you're coasting, you can pull the clutch in, kind of switch through maps real quick or, um, 
It's kind of user-friendly. Not the most user-friendly, but also not the worst. Yeah, overall, these bikes are two very different bikes. Um, they both work well, just in different conditions. The Honda, like we said, the, t the tighter terrain, the slower the terrain, the smoother terrain, um, <clears throat> the bike gets that much better. Whereas the Kawasaki, the rougher and the root rockier and rootier and more edges and the higher speeds, the Kawasaki really, really shines. So overall, the two different motorcycles, um, you kind of pick which terrain you're, you're, more, you're used to riding in. Uh, if you're more of a tight single track guy, the Honda might be the better option, but if you're more of a faster flowing single track and roads and stuff like that, the Kawasaki might be the better option. So overall, they both work really well. Just one, each bike does something a little bit better than the other in different trains, and they do something a little bit worse than the other in different trains. So it's kind of up to, your, up to you to decide where you want your bike to perform the best. But overall, they're both very capable machines. Uh, min minimal mods are needed to make these bikes kind of trail friendly. Uh, we've ridden them with like 350, 450 Husky dual sport bikes out here. And yeah, they're super snappy, kind of more aggressive than like a dual sport power. But it's not a bad thing. It's, it's more exciting. Uh, you kind of be, be on your toes a little bit more. And you can kind of learn to ride that, that power a little better than the, uh, or a little different than the, the dual sport bikes, so to say. And uh, the Kawasaki also, I think, favors just kind of easy to ride, comfortable. You can be lazy on it or you can be aggressive. Whereas I feel like the Honda... Not say it favors aggressive kind of Justin Barsha style riding, but you kind of got to be on your toes and paying attention and kind of focusing on how you're riding. And the spike performs really well, but if you start getting lazy or tired, I feel like this is where that bike kind of doesn't shine quite as much as a Kawasaki. So it's just you're aggressive, you're flowing, you're hitting your marks, you're kind of thinking of how you're riding and setting the bike up and kind of hitting, hitting lines uh, in a certain way. I think this Honda really handles well, but it doesn't have that kind of lazy, tired where uh, if you get lazy and tired it doesn't handle it's harder to manage and handle than the uh, the Kawasaki is so overall great bikes we're uh, gonna keep testing these bikes uh, hopefully do a comparison a full comparison with all the 450 off-road racers and uh, yeah stay tuned to dirt bike test for more as always hit me up at Trevor Hunter 224 on Instagram or Trevor at dirtbiketest.com I'll try to answer any of your questions um, give you some feedback my advice whatever you are looking for and if I don't have an answer, hopefully I can get you an answer. So, uh, yeah, until then, we'll see you on the trails. If you liked what you saw in this video, come check us out over at dirtbiketest.com on the webs. We have bike tests, product tests, a lot of fresh dirt, and you can even support us by clicking through our links. Hopefully, we'll see you out in the trail.